All right, we are live. Perfect. All right. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. We are just waiting for people to pop on. Perfect. Kathy Lerner. John Green. It's good to see you. We'll just give everyone a few minutes to pop on. Hi, Amanda. Hey, guys. Hope everyone's having a happy Wednesday. Hey, T. Breezy. <laughs> All right, hey, Ann, how's it going? All right. All right, so we'll get started. So, hey, everyone, my name is Rachel Kewen. I am our um, sales manager, and so I'm here at Penswood's Winery, and I am here with Lexa Ellis, hey, our guys. fearless tasting room manager. <laughs> and we're going to talk to you all about Sauvignon Blanc, which we're super pumped about. Um, but before we get started, we just have a couple of announcements and we'll chat about it a little bit more at the yeah. end. But if you want to tell everyone about our cupcake and wine pairing. Yes, so we're super excited. We're bringing back the cupcakes and wine. We're very bummed that we had to cancel so many dates in March, but we found a way. So we are still pairing with Diodulce and we are bringing it back. It's going to be the same pairing, but it's going to be four cupcakes. And we're excited. We're super excited. And also on Friday, um, we are doing a live virtual happy hour with Goat Rodeo Farm and Dairy in Pittsburgh. And so we are going to chat with cheesemaker Katie Geis and talk all about their cheese making process. She's going to show us their facility and all the cute baby goats that were born this spring. <laughs> so don't miss Friday as well. Yes. But anyway... Back to Sauvignon Blanc. So Sauvignon Blanc it has a wide range of styles and flavors. Um, we mostly focus on the drier styles here as they do worldwide, but in New Zealand and California, some add a little residual sugar to get a little more body um, to the wine. Um, and, but you see it white Bordeaux blended with Sauvignon and a little bit of Muscadet. Uh, it's very, very famous dessert wine, Sauternes, beautiful, elegant dessert wine. It can be barrel aged as well, but again, like, mostly looking for that super bright, zesty Sauvignon Blanc with a lot of citrusy flavors that we love. And it's actually a really cool kind of entry level wine because it is, has such a co close correlation to the perceived flavors and a lot mm -hmm. of flavors that we're really familiar with, like grapefruit, lemon, some grassy notes in there that it's really kind of fun if you're a newer wine drinker, you're like, you can pick it out, you can smell it, you can taste it, and it kind of gets you a little more excited about wine. You're like, oh yeah, I feel all that, instead <laughs> of like, you know, some weird like tobacco and bramble, and you're like, what the hell yeah. is even that? <laughs> so, you know, it's it's a little more familiar flavors, which like, again, keeps you a little more excited about the wine. Um, just a little bit of background on Sauv Blanc. It's called, in French, it means the wild white. Mm -hmm. And actually here at the tasting room, our general manager calls it savage. <laughs> so she is She's a sorry. <laughs> wild, savage little vine that grows very well all over the world. Um, it did originate about 500 years ago in France. Um, I think Southwest France, don't know if it's Bordeaux or Loire, but it is, um, a it is descended from the Sauvignon grape, but it is related to Gruner and Chenin. And like we talked about last week, Cabernet Franc plus Sauvignon Blanc equals Cabernet Sauvignon, one of the most beautiful and popular varietals in the world. So Sauvignon Blanc is definitely a very, very important grape in the wine world. Um, a little bit about it in our vineyard. We first planted these grapes in 2012 um, when we made our first fully estate grown vintage in 2016. But like I said, it adapts pretty readily to all environments, but it thrives in really cool sunny climates. And we do use European clones with, that have a short vegetated cycle, so it's kind of a little bit better suited to our cooler mm -hmm. climate as well. Um, like I was talking to Lex about, um, Lex about earlier is one of the benefits of Sauvignon Blanc is that it buds a little bit later in the spring, about a week later than the Chardonnay. So if you get into a situation like this spring, for example, when we had a frost scare about two weeks ago, you know, the Sauvignon Blanc was safe because she wasn't out yet. So. Again, another great reason yeah. that we love it having it here in a cooler climate. But little, it's just a cheerful little wine and, and it starts from the vine itself. It has these really bright green little grapes, nice tight clusters. Um, it is robust, it's relatively vigorous. And one of the things I love about Sauvignon Blanc is how it presents itself. It's very indicative of 
where it's grown. The soil there, it really expresses that French word, the terroir, terroir very, very well. So when you see it grown in sandy soils, it's a little more herbaceous. When you see it grown in clay, you get more of those fruity notes. And when you get the limestone and chalk like they do in the Loire Valley, it has this beautiful mineral driven notes to it. And our Sauvignon Blanc is kind of like the best of both worlds because our vineyard out here in Chad's Ford, lots of clay and very, very iron rich. So we get some of those really beautiful, juicy, ripe tropical flavors, but with that hint of underlying minerality from that iron rich soil. And it makes for a very, very lovely wine. Um, but the profile in general, again, kind of depends on the climate, the soil, the viticultural techniques in cooler climate tends to be a little bit less ripe, more citrusy. In a warmer climate, you get those juicy, peachy, big tropical notes, um, but you get lime, green apple, mm -hmm. some passion fruit, pear, and that signature green note, which we'll talk about um, a little bit in this wine and how it's a little bit different, but Sauvignon Blanc has those pyrazines. So it's that green bell pepper. Um, Lex, you were saying you were, had some California Sauvignon Blanc that was quite spicy. Yes, very that that jalapeno. Yeah, yep. that jalapeno note, which is just like so zippy. And again, just so like livens up mm -hmm. your tongue. It's a very, very exciting wine. Um, but it can be a little bit lighter, like basil and tarragon and lemongrass and beautiful medium high acidity and um but you but you do see it um oaked sometimes and you'll get those like pie crust and dill and actually i was telling you last time i was in oregon i had some oak sauvignon blanc which was very interesting but i kind of prefer to see it exhibit more of the bright mm -hmm. fruitier characteristics which it's known for and kind of if you love like gruner or albarino or chanon blanc sauvignon blanc is definitely your lady yeah so we have some questions. Your favorite wine? Yeah. I know Andy is really Andy nice. always is a go-to yeah. <laughs> for her. The Sauvignon Blanc. It's mine as well for white wine. More of a red, but that Sauvignon Blanc, especially now during this weather, is perfect. It's so refreshing. And yeah. this vintage in general, um, we at Penn's Woods, we made our very first vintage of Sauvignon Blanc in 2009. Made an 11, a 13, a 14. But our very first, like I said before, fully estate grown vintage was in 2016 and today we are trying our 2019 Sauvignon Blanc. Excellent vintage. Yeah. All the whites popping out of 2019 are fantastic. We're super excited. We, we were just talking, come, oh yeah, we were just talking about the Viognier 2019 will be releasing mm -hmm. here soon. So, so aromatic and so mm -hmm. much flavor. You're saying you could smell it like across the room. <laughs> it's just beautiful and all these, like I said, these 2019 whites are popping. Mm -hmm. um, very long, hot summer, almost drought conditions midsummer. nice dry harvest. Um, we actually harvested this one the 8th, of, the 8th of September. We made about 400 cases. This is 12 and a half ABV. Um, we did a, a little bit of a war, uh, cooler fermentation uh, between 14 and 15 degrees Celsius. It kind of lets it um, kind of develop some of more of those fruity notes in there. Um, and I think it's a little bit more like, I don't know, I was telling you, I think it's kind of like Loire Valley meets mm -hmm. South Africa, which is the old world meets new world, which really embodies like the spirit of what we do mm -hmm. here at Penn's Woods is old world technique in the winery, in the vineyard, but with, you know, Pennsylvania, new world soil and yeah. new world climate. And that's really exactly what this wine is. A lot of like fresh citrusy notes, um, but some of those really great tropical flavors and that underlying minerality. It's a nice straw color too. Mm -hmm. But we were saying there's no residual sugar in this, but there's some in California and New Zealand. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's like a gram or two to add to the, to the texture of it. Yeah. But this one, again, you said we talked about that grass, you know, it's a little bit lighter in ours, more of like a lemongrass. Yeah. So you get some elderflower, but it's mainly like, like you said, underripe pineapple, mm -hmm. lots of guava. Yeah. Very, 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 very aromatic. Tons of great florals, some jasmine. Um, and this vintage is a little bit different from prior vintages. We ha it has a nice wet pebble acidity and it's mm -hmm. very glossy. 
Yeah. It's just very like, polished. Like Yeah. Yeah, when you drink it. Mm -hmm. Just slides around in your mouth. It's so easy to drink, but a very refreshing finish. Very crisp. And that's what it's known for, the minerality and mm -hmm. the acidity of it. And smelling it, you smell that citrus note, which really you expect then the acidity, and it's really nice and balanced too. Mm, it's just, it smells and tastes exactly like summer. It's yes, go-to. It's, it's a go-to, super, super pumped. And actually, we created a recipe together of the perfect summer pairing. Oh my God. <laughs> We're I'm super just, excited. I'm just about to like <laughs> take this straight to the face right on camera. <laughs> this is our um, grilled Mexican corn dip. So we have... So beautiful. Oh too. my God, it's so good. <laughs> so it has um, grilled roasted or grilled sweet corn, um, cream cheese, sour cream. We got jalapenos, fresh lime juice, cilantro, a little bit of chili powder on top. Um, just throw it in the oven super super good and it goes so so well with the Sauvignon Blanc yes especially yeah with that that cilantro another great herb goes really well with Sauvignon Blanc and the cream cheese and any kind of cheese like goat cheese goes really well with Sauvignon Blanc as well mm. oh my god you gotta chip. I'm sorry <laughs> I'm hogging a chip holy shit hot damn <laughs> it is so good it has that acidity that cuts through that creamy cheese with the fresh lime juice in here and all the citrusy notes in the Sauvignon Blanc. It is to die for. I had some of it yesterday. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just dying. I'm going to go like all guy for you. Like two tickets to Flavor Town. <laughs> we right were talking here. about how Traminette is another one. I, I always mm -hmm. thought with spicy food, Traminette. But this has a kick to it and the Sauvignon Blanc goes incredible yeah. with it. It has it has a, like that hint of a kick, but there's so much yep. juicy fruit in the sub blanc that it really tames it down and complements yeah. all those like Mexican style flavors. Like this, this is wonderful. We're actually, if you want to look out tomorrow, we will be posting the recipe on our blog. If you want to make it for you have to. Memorial Day weekend yeah. and impress the hell out of everybody. <laughs> um, but what, yeah. are, what are some other pairings? Um, some other pairings. Um, you know, we talked a little about um upstairs about some more mexican food chips and guacamole some blackened shrimp tacos mm -hmm. and sauvignon blanc it has that Great crisp fish. refreshing thing that happens when you get like you know a crisp mexican lager same kind of effect mm -hmm. with sauvignon blanc um tons of fish Any, and anything Oysters. with herbs mm -hmm. too can really mm -hmm. bring it out because this has like tarragon would go really well with mm -hmm. the sauvignon blanc too yeah. there's a hint of that think green Go green. Lots of salads that sometimes are a little bit challenging to pair with. Sauvignon Blanc has that green note in it, and they really complement and not battle and each other. And add some of the goat cheese on top, too. Holy shit, Chef. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Chef. Mm -hmm. oh. Even Swiss is another one mm -hmm. that yep. pairs well with it. Yep. So, you know, but you can do chicken, pork, um, turkey, but again, a lot of seafood, um, halibut, snapper. Mm -hmm. I mean, really... It, one of the most fabulous pairing wines is Sauvignon Blanc. And yeah. so there's just a lot of options, but it's great. Just great. It's, it's so fruit forward, but then you compare it, mm -hmm. it because it's so herbaceous. Yeah. It's really great. It's great to drink by itself, but yep, that's pretty much it about Sauvignon Blanc. It's crisp, it's fresh, it's elegant, it's light on its feet, which is exactly what you want for the summertime. And it has that beautiful herbal scent, that nice citrusy driven <laughs> flavor that just makes me want to It's party. incredible. It's yeah. It's perfect. And I was seeing someone said that it's your replacement for Gruner, which exactly right, mm -hmm. because we used to have some Gruner. Yeah. It's no longer, but this is a perfect replacement for it. Yep. So, you know, you like light, bright, zesty whites, mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc, your girl. Yeah. Um, and if you have any questions about Sauvignon Blanc or anything we didn't cover, just feel free direct message us. Yeah. I'm happy to talk about this anytime. Yeah. All the time. All the time. <laughs> um, and again, we'll be posting this recipe tomorrow. Just for anyone who's jumped in a little bit later, just want to remind you, on Friday, we are doing a live ritual happy hour with Goat Rodeo Farm and Dairy in Pittsburgh, showing us all about their cheese making techniques. Again, fabulous goat cheese. Really pairs well with this wine. Mm. Um, <laughs> and uh, cute, cute baby goats that were all born on the farm this spring. And then, Lex, if you want to go a little more into detail about our virtual cupcake and wine pairing. yeah we're gonna do two weekends of it because oh, it's so yeah please dig in because <laughs> it's so popular um 
we're gonna do May 30th and June 6th, but definitely get like the tickets now. You can just mm -hmm. order online um, mm -hmm. and set up a time to pick it we're up. All, we're almost sold out for May. We, we are, yeah, very, very close. close. Um, and then we have some left for the June 6th. So you can pick up Friday between 11 to 4 or that Saturday um, between 11 to 3. And then we're going to go live and do the pairing with yep. you guys, which is really cool. We wish we could have this in our tasting room, but this has never been done before where mm -hmm. we actually experience the pairing with you guys. So we're super yeah, stoked usually we, you know, we bring it out, we talk to you about it mm -hmm. a little bit, but to actually get to sit down with you yeah. and like go through each pairing individually, yeah. I'm really, really pumped. I know. I have a lot to say yeah. about, you know. We all do. It's we, our we, favorite. We, 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 uh, cause we create these cupcake flavors, you, you know, just specifically for these vintages. So it's, mm -hmm. we put a lot of thought into it, a lot of love in it. And we're yeah. really excited to bring that back for you yeah. guys this year. At home, in the comfort of your home. Yes. yes. So anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. We will sign off. Yeah. And check you guys again on Friday. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Bye.